Welcome back to Zero AV, and today we're going to be talking about our electric Porsche Boxster and CCS rapid charging. So, let's go. As you can see, we've got a CCS2 rapid charging point added to our Boxster. Um, we've got a bit of a 3D printed stuff going on just because it's our, our prototype test vehicle. We've also got a little button hidden down in here which gives us indication as to state of charge and um, whether it's charging, whether it's ready to charge, whether it's communicating, etc., which we'll go through a bit later on. Um, it also does the release to allow us to release. Um, as you can see, CCS type, type 2 charging port. Simply plugs in, activates, allows you to charge. Now, instead of going through everything here at the unit, we're going to go on a little uh, adventure. We'll get So now we're going to take a journey to a local-ish CCS charging point and show you guys how simple it is to use and get up to hopefully 70, 80 kilowatts per hour. It might only be a 50 kilowatt, let's see. So now we're out in the box there, I'm actually on the motorway, uh, well, just, just under 70 miles an hour, but it's nice, it's actually pretty quiet apart from the stupid squeaky roof. Um, and we're heading to a local CCS fast charger. The one we're going to is uh, a Polar Plus, which is a uh, Charge Master, which is a local one for us, which is 50 kilowatts. Um, this will obviously also charge on all the other CCS charge stations as well. We've actually spent a lot of time going around in the box to all sorts of different cheap CCS chargers, just to make sure that it works for every single one, which it does. Um, and as new ones come onto the market, we'll also test that and if we need to make updates, make updates. A CCS kit in this works with the Orion battery manager system currently, um, in which they've been nice enough to make adjustments to their software and actually add a tick box. So it's really simple, once you've installed your CCS kit, you can go on the Orion software, just tick a box and it does all the canvas work for you, it gets all that set up. Now for those of you that haven't watched the box previously or seen any of the previous builds on it, it was done about a year and a half ago. It's actually the first build we did on, well, one of the first builds I ever did on YouTube. Um, so it's running a Tesla small drive unit, 36 kilowatt hour Tesla B-Class pack, but it was a high mileage pack, so it's actually more like 27 kilowatt hours. Um, liquid cooled battery, runs the original Porsche radiators for cooling, two, two coolant loops, one for the motor, one for the batteries. We've got all the original Porsche dials working in this, so we've got amps, speed, fuel, and temperature and then down there we've also got our original our, our original our new 911 gauge that we've been working on as well which does our kilowatts range left in the tank uh, how many watt hours we're using what what gear we're in whether we're in sport mode or eco mode it's a really cool stuff going on down there um, apparently i am currently doing 264 watt hours per mile which is not bad really um, for a converted vehicle and I've used 3.8 kilowatts since I started driving. Uh, we've got a 3.3 kilowatt hour charger fitted to this as well as the CCS because we just got to the point where we didn't see a point in having uh, a large AC charger when you've got the option of doing DC fast charging. Most people are just going to charge at home overnight and then rapid charge on the odd occasion when you need to do a long journey. So that then brings me on to my other point of why do you need an 80, 100 kilowatt hour battery pack in your car. Why are you carrying around all that weight when you go and do five miles a day or 10 miles a day? You simply don't. So our approach at the moment is more lines of fit a bit, a bit smaller battery pack, so your weight distribution is right in your car, but have CCS rapid charging. You save money on batteries, you've got a less complicated build, your car weighs less, and for the odd time you do a long journey, you can rapid charge along the way anyway. Oh, there she is, our 50 kilowatt charge station. Just hope I don't crash. So we just arrived at a Tony Carvery. Yes, 50 kilowatt charge station. Uh, got a card, but you can use the app. Now I'm just gonna swap over to a trusty iPhone to a bit of first person shooting for you. So let's go. So we have our Porsche, or our CCS charge point. Remember, uh, where's this go? It 
Let's see how long this takes, shall we? I think these things would be a bit quicker by now, wouldn't you? Contactless payment transaction failed. Your card account has not been debited. Let's try again, shall we? Member. What's that one? I don't know. Card has been accepted, so second time lucky. So, CCS rapid charging. Charger. This is awkward. So a little light comes on here. Blue means the lock's engaged. Then on here it now goes for an authentication process. Vehicle detector, communication okay. Hopefully it says safety check okay, which it should do. Basically does a HV ground sensing to make sure there's no funny business going on um, and it's safe to go. So it's now done that process. Which we then go to green, which means charging. And this should ramp up, as you can see. It's telling us battery packs on 82%. How long we've been charging for. Whatever you don't hit the big red button. I've done that before. That's just because I'm a child. And yeah, energy supplied, away you go. Right, I suppose we've uh, put enough charge in. As I said, we came in at about 80%, so we're 87% now after not even five minutes. Um, obviously because we're over that 80% state of charge, it doesn't charge as fast. It ramps it down naturally, so it doesn't do any damage. So we're normally, I think we're probably charging currently now at about 20 kilowatts an hour. But if you're below that 80%, you're gonna be charging at the full, or very close to the full 50 kilowatts per hour. Um, so we're now gonna head back out and do the disconnection process. So back to the trusty iPhone, which he swaps over to the iPhone now. As you can see, nearly fully charged on there. So now stop charging on the Porsche. You can press stop charging on here, which will start the charging process, or you can do it on the button here, which then communicates back to the charger, tells the charger to stop charging. We put 2.1 kilowatts in in five minutes, 5.4, five minutes. The fact that that's now gone to blue means that this should be unlocked. Yes. So that unplugs, and it goes back to as it was. So as you can see, that was actually pretty quick and straightforward. Uh, very little effort. Uh, if you don't have the card like we have, you can simply just use Zap Maps, um, or there's apps for every single type of charge type out there. Um, but it also tells you what if they're available, if they're broken, comments from other people if they've had any issues. Um, but yeah, overall, it's a pretty straightforward process for anyone to do. Um, so it's, I suppose, the first time you do it could be a bit frustrating, a bit like putting when you first put fuel in your car, when you first get a car. Um, but to be honest, if you've got an iPhone or uh, a phone, iPhone maybe not just, um, it's just my personal preference, and you've got the app, it makes it a hell of a lot easier. Um, and it is as simple as I've just shown you. Um, if you go in as guest, most of them you can just use wireless payment, uh, wireless car payment now, so contactless which makes it even easier again, because you don't need to have access to any of the apps or anything along the way. Um, this one obviously also does type two, and it does Chadamo, but Chadamo is slowly being phased out as it's fairly limited um, and slightly more basic. So when I get back on the road, go back to the unit and we'll do a tech time now uh, with me, surprisingly, on the whole kit that comes as our CCS system. So let's go for tech time with Chris. And this is our tech time part of the episode. We're actually going to talk through the parts that come in the CCS kit, which is what we've got fitted to the Boxster. Currently you need to be above 200 volts. You need to run the Ryan 2 battery management system as well. Um, I'll work on other battery management systems, but they're not available as of yet. 
So we've split the kit up into sections. Um, we have inside battery pack and we have outside of battery pack. So we've gone to the hassle to actually make up the looms as well. Um, so part of the kit, you actually get a pair of 200 amp contactors and 200 amp fuse. You get the contactor control box. Now this sits inside of the battery box or your high voltage junction box, um, depending on how you've wired it. We do everything internal to the battery box. So we have a multi-pin connector, which you would cut onto your battery box to actually be an exit line. Um, then internal on the battery box, you have HV sensing wires. Um, so you have one for battery side. So this is positive negative contactor after the contactors, so after the batteries. And then you have one which is positive negative sensing for the CCS side, but this is after the contactors. Um, so that will sense the, the voltage for pre-charges and etc. We also have contactor control outputs. Now, this doesn't just do the CCS contacts, this will also do your main battery contacts and your pre-charge limb. So this is an all-in-one. You don't need your contactor controller. This will do all of it. So on here you have pre-charge, you have positive contact and negative contactor. Then you also have your positive and negative CCS contactors. In addition to that, you get a couple of little lugs, which for doing your HV sensing lines. And that is basically everything that goes within the battery box. We then move on to external from the battery box in which we've made the loom up as well. So we have a loom, which has a multi-pin connector that goes onto the one which you fit to your battery box. It also has a multi-pin connector that goes onto the CCS2 controller. So this is an external VCU that you plug into. It also has mounting points around the edges. We then have three pre-terminated connectors like so. Now these are all also labelled. Um, so we have locking motor, stop, stop slash LED and charge plug. Now these actually plug onto your CCS cable. Now these are a standard type of connector and in the user guide there is actually the information as to which connectors we've used so you can make extension looms where necessary so you don't actually have to cut any of these. Just make up extension looms. So on the CCS socket you have two caps you can remove. You have your AC cables, which come out, which will go to your standard AC charger. Now these are three phase, obviously you might be running a single phase charger, that's um, obviously down to preference. We have a control pilot connector and temperature sensors. So it actually checks, continually checks the temperature of the DC charging lines to make sure they don't overheat. And if they do, obviously it will limit back or shut down. Um, so this plugs straight in. To the relevant connector on here. We then have what we call start-stop LED. So this is actually um, an RGB LED and it's also a button so it will stop charging. Now this LED does, as we've shown previous in the video, um, it does your blue, it does your white, it does your green, it does your red. So it gives you your, your information as to what state your charging is in. Um, and that is also pre-terminated to plug straight in. And then we have your locking pin slash motor. Now there's three positions around the CCS connector that, that can be mounted onto. Um, and that is pre-terminated as well. There's also an override release in case it ever got stuck. You do have a pull pin to release it. Now the CCS connector wants to be mounted in the upright orientation. You can tip it back by 45 degrees or forward. Um, we do not recommend that you mount it vertically. Um, if you do, that's at your own risk as the drain port is on the bottom of here. The only thing we haven't spoken about is the other side of the CCS loom. So this is our communication, uh, 12 volts, ground, CAN bus. Um, there's also a HV present on here, which will put a 12 volt high, uh, which you can use for things like activation of PTC heaters and DC to DCs. So they don't try and pull power through the pre-charge system. Um, on here you also have a 12 volt high, uh, which will go high when it detects the plug is plugged in. So you can use that then to activate your relays to bring online things like your battery management system, your battery charger, your fans, etc. Anything you want to bring online when you are charging the vehicle, you can use the 12 volt output on there to activate a relay to bring that on. So the way we do build is we run two separate systems when we set up a car. 
we'll have an ignition live system, which will bring on the motor controller, the motor, bring, basically bring on the whole vehicle system. Um, and we also have a charge side of that, which will be things like the BMS, the battery cooling fans and heaters, pumps. So anything regarding to the battery side of things for charging, we'll have that. So it will come through the ignition live and it will split over the two for ignition live. Um, but if someone, you plug the plug in, um, you use the output on here to close the relay and just do the charging side of the vehicle. Um, that keeps it nice, neat, keeps it safe. And only when you plug that type two in or that CCS connector in that our vehicle comes alive. Also means the vehicle can be locked at that point. Um, so you can charge when the vehicle is completely locked down um, without you staying with the vehicle or having the ignition on. Now, if you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. These are now available on our website. Um, we tend to keep them in stock, but they're not a direct straight dispatch because we tend to check over and just update softwares before we release them out. Now, regarding setting up the CAN bus, it's really simple. Head onto the Orion software, go to CAN bus, and there's actually a, a tick box that Orion have nicely put in there for us um, called Zero VCCS. So you basically check that box and then reflash your, your software onto your Orion, um, and that'll actually allow you to get your CCS working nice and easy. And also, we've had it added to the third-party items on the Orion, so you can do things like fault finding, check on signals, etc., um, which is really good if you have any issues because you can get in contact with us and we can work through that with you. Now, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe. And if you have any questions, as I said, please let me know in the comments or drop us an email to sales at zero-ev.co.uk. Thank you.